Okay, I'm just exercising the machine a little bit. Um, break it in, see if anything goes out of adjustment. Listen to the sounds it makes. Sounds pretty smooth. And in a minute, we'll give it some abuse. Okay, let's abuse it by making it do some hard work. I'm going to cut a quarter inch step into the jaws of this chuck. This will be the last pass then. You'll be able to hear how the spindle motor is loaded. So it's doing some good work. The motor has been getting hot. Each pass has been cutting one hundredth of an inch deep. And out of respect for the very large circumference, the feed rate on the cross slide has been half an inch per minute. Everything seems to be working real good. Very nice. Did a great job beating across that gap there. Well then, I guess it's time to think about doing something a little fancier. And for that, I wrote some code. Mr. Newton suggested that for a demonstration I should cut chess pieces. So I found this image of a Staunton design on the net and I modified that so that everybody has an identical base and uh, the sizes are all suitable for my application here. I cut them in half to produce a profile then I wrote code here that scans the bitmap and creates G-code. And this is the kind of code it makes. It scans to do the rough passes. And once it's all done with the rough passes, it does a nice outline for the finished cut. So, and that's the profile of a pawn, and that's what we're going to cut. Okay, for this bit of demonstration, I had to make a very sharp carbide cutter with a diamond blade out of the tooth from a big saw blade, and I've set up a chip of ivory between centers here, and we're ready to uh, see how well it cuts a pawn.
it's cutting bi-directionally because I'm totally not worried about backlash. And here's a close-up of the final bit of the rough cutting and the finish pass. This is the finish pass right now. That does it. There's the little pawn. There's the little pawn out of mammoth ivory. Well, in summary, the tag wave is a very beefy little wave. That's where they put their money. And now that it's been blinged up a little bit, it's very user friendly. Having the stepper motor for the cross slide in the rear means you don't have to work over the top of it. The twin screws provide for a very smooth and accurate movement of the saddle along the bed of the lathe. The spindle motor is mounted up out of the way. The switch is convenient to operate. And the various chip covers keep all the scurf out of the work. So it'll perform the hogging off that you saw beating its way over the gaps of the chuck jaws and it'll do very delicate work as you saw with that miniature pawn out of mammoth ivory. If you would like to own one of these lathes please get in touch with me. I'll put one on eBay for you. You can have it any way you like it and you can choose your color too. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.